Haley, it's great talking to you. So we got, obviously, uh, you know, you and I have grown up uh, in the, the Southeast. We've always heard about the New South, the New South. Some interesting things are happening. You got Mike Espy here running that's in a competitive race. Obviously, Doug Jones won. Uh, and then the Georgia and Florida races uh, for governor are races unlike anything that we have seen. Um, Try to put it in perspective for us as a man who knows more about Southern politics than just about anybody. Well, thank you. And by the way, I can't see you right now, but I was looking a while ago, and I do like your wardrobe. You and you and Mika look very good <laughs> in old Mitch <laughs> outfits. Uh, yeah, well, hotty toddy. You know, as I as, as uh, you know, Haley, my dad lived. Uh, we all lived in Meridian, Mississippi. Uh, when Archie Manning was quarterback, so I'm, I, I this is, he was my first hero along with Hank Aaron. So I figured I should wear this on Friday before I go crimson red on Saturday. Well, he was uh, he was a, he was in school with me, classmate of my wife's, and while he was out on the field, I was up in the stands drinking bourbon like most good old Miss people. <laughs> <laughs> but look, right. po politics in the country has changed. The Democratic Party has moved very much to the left. The Republican Party hasn't moved so much on policy, but has become much more purist, uh, if you will. And, and you're seeing that uh, developing in, uh, in the South. Uh, Doug Jones, got to run against the only person in Alabama he could have beat uh, and, and, and did in a very, very close race when the Republican candidate was uh, somebody that had some very, very serious accusations against him that many people believed were accurate and weren't going to vote for him. They didn't vote for Doug Jones, they voted against Roy Moore. We'll see what happens in Mississippi. I saw you had Mike Espione. Uh, he's from my hometown. Our families have been friends for generations. His grandfather was a customer of the bank. My grandfather started. Uh, but I think Mississippi will continue to have two Republican senators. We've had two Republican senators now for 30 consecutive years, and I think we'll continue to do that. Over in Georgia and Florida, you got two very close governor's races where the Democrats have nominated African-American candidates who are winning, getting a lot, a lot of outside support. Uh, the Democrat candidate in Georgia has had announced or actually given more than $35 million from very liberal donors around the country. I, I just saw uh, uh, where Gillum, the, the candidate in Florida, also is getting huge amounts of uh, of money from liberal groups, uh, those are going to be competitive races, and it's consistent with the Democratic Party's move to the left nationally. John, uh, Governor uh, John Meacham, wondering hey, John. to what extent do you think this? How are you, sir? Uh, Great. Wondering to what extent you think this is uh, a cultural shift, and what role economics plays in that? Because in my home state, we have our, some of our biggest investments are Nissan and Volkswagen. Uh, in South Carolina, obviously BMW. I'm sure they're, they're Mississippi examples. Uh, it seems to me as though we're we're in a uh, the South is in a global economy, even though when it is tracking toward Trump, it tends to be saying, well, actually, we want to be more protectionist, at least rhetorically. Can you unpack that for us? Well, John, I think we're, we're like Tennessee in the sense that we've got Toyota about 50 miles from where you are. Their newest U.S. plant is there, Nissan, Airbus. We've got other big American injuries like Huntington Ingalls uh, is the largest private employer in our state. They build ships with the Navy and the Coast Guard. Uh, our agriculture is also part of the global economy. We export most of our agricultural products. You know, we were once the place where cotton was king. Today, it's soybeans and corn and uh, and timber, for that matter. Th though that's not exported as much. So yeah, we're we're part of the global economy. I, I do think a lot of people in Mississippi, particularly farmers, understand that the Trump administration's main focus is to try to make the the Chinese stop cheating. The Chinese have been in the World Trade Organization since. 2001, more or less, and they've cheated ever since. 
And we've had two administrations, one Republican, one Democrat, that's never tried really to do anything about it. And Trump is trying to do something about it. Uh, and, and it's never going to be easier, John, because their economy in China is growing and growing and growing. And for some of those years, it was very much approaching capitalism under Dao, Deng Xiaoping and, and Jiang Zemin. Today, the Communist Party is as powerful almost as, as it was under Mao. And it's crunching down on, on American businesses in China. And Trump rightly wants to do something about it while we still can. Governor Barber, it's Willie Geis. It's good to see you. I wish you were here in Oxford with us in your hometown. Show us around a little bit, in your home state anyway. Um, I want to ask you about the race. You mentioned Mike Espy, a longtime family friend of yours, but the Republicans in the, in the race, Cindy Hyde-Smith and Senator Chris McDaniel, who will be joining us shortly here on our set, are vowing for the support of Donald Trump. Cindy Hyde-Smith has won the president's endorsement. The president was scheduled actually to do an event for her down here before the hurricane struck, and he decided to stay home. Um, what should they be saying about Donald Trump in the state where he is very popular? Well, I, let me just say, uh, I'm from Cindy Hyde Smith, and uh, so is President Trump. As you, as you said, he was coming to Mississippi actually today to uh, yep. campaign for her, and, and I'm sure that or believe that will be rescheduled. Uh, and, and I think that is a plus for him. Trump is popular in Mississippi. He carried Mississippi by a pretty good margin. Uh, and I think most Mississippians approve of his policies. They certainly approve of the tax bill. And more importantly, they approve of the results of the tax bill, where our economy is now growing twice as fast as it was during the Obama administration. And for a lot of the heartland, including a lot of Mississippi, in the Obama, quote, recovery on Main Street, you couldn't tell the difference between the recovery and the recession. Because when the national economy is growing 2.1 percent, the economies of a lot of parts of the heartland between the bi-coastal, the two bi-coastal granola belt areas, uh, they weren't growing at all. <laughs> you know, for the, for right. the, now with yeah. the economy is growing 4.2 nationally, you're seeing growth out in the heartland. And so that's why Mississippians, for the most part, support Trump's policies. He, of course, he says some things that, that people don't like to hear or don't agree with. And, and, and I'm a free trader myself, though I do recognize the correctness of his view that if we're going to ever make China stop cheating and abide by the rules that they agreed to, then it's never going to be easier than today. So uh, I, I think most Mississippians are like me in that regard. Hmm. All right. Haley Barber, thank you so much. It's uh, always great talking to you. We really appreciate you being with us. Uh Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.